Good morning, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So today I am launching a brand new series and it's going to be called Top Tip Tuesdays. So I am, fingers crossed, hopefully going to be releasing a short video for you every Tuesday moving forward or almost every Tuesday if I can manage it, where I'm going to be showing you some tips and tutorials and just showing you how I sew really and I thought that might be something you would be interested in. So what I'm wanting from you guys is for you to tell me some of the techniques that you struggle with or that you want to see how I achieve those finishes etc and I will film a little tutorial showing you how I do it. So I'm starting this week with inseam pockets and the reason I'm starting with inseam pockets is because I know so many women out there myself included love pockets but generally hate inseam pockets and the reason for that is because I'm a pear shape my hips are my widest area and I find in most garments that I sew inseam pockets just tend to add bulk in that area that I don't enjoy wearing I don't need any extra help there, shall we say. So I have found a technique that Tasuti patterns use for inseam pockets on some of their patterns that is absolute genius. And I have used that technique on the garment that I'm wearing today, which is the Bailey shorts. And I'm going to insert some video footage of what I mean. So Tasuti's technique for doing inseam pockets is so good that it means that it completely stabilizes the actual pocket opening so that it doesn't actually bag out. You might have noticed if you've ever tried inseam pockets in garments that they can tend to just be a bit floppy on the outer edge and that tends to bag out and add that extra bulk around the hip area that some of us don't like. Well Tasuti has a very unique way of creating their inseam pockets and it's absolute genius and I love it and it's, me it's meant that I'm now able to add inseam pockets to garments that I wouldn't normally want to put them in and I can do them in a way that makes the pocket opening just completely flush against the side seam so that it doesn't add any extra bulk in that area. So I'm sharing that tutorial with you today and as I say this is hopefully going to be a series moving forward where every week I'm going to just do a little short technique or a top tip for you that I found helps me with my sewing and helps me achieve a much better finish. So I'd really like you to leave some comments down below about the types of techniques that you would like any help with or support with or you want to see how I attack a particular technique and I'd be happy to film that and share that with you. So I hope you enjoy this vlog and I will see you again next time. Take care. Bye. So we're going to start with our pattern pieces and what I've got here are some calico that I'm demonstrating this in. I'm showing you the pocket pieces here and what would be either your skirt pieces or your trouser pieces or whatever garment you are working with. And you need to make sure you transfer the notches which show you where to align the pocket onto your actual garment. And then we're going to start with one of the side pieces of either your skirt or your trousers and we're lining up the notches of the pocket piece here with the side seam so you're butting up those notches and the raw edges together and we're just going to pin in place what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this over to the sewing machine in a second and we are going to be stitching only between those notched areas so we're over at the sewing machine now and I'm just removing the pins so that I don't sew over them because that would be bad. And I'm just lining up where that first notch is and then I am sewing at my seam allowance which in this case for demonstration purposes is half an inch but you know in some patterns it will be five eighths of an inch, some it will be a centimetre. You just follow the instructions for your sewing pattern as to what the seam allowance is for the side seam and make sure that you use that seam allowance for this particular part of attaching the pocket. So next you can see here where I have stitched and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be snipping into 
further into that seam allowance up to the stitching that we've just done but making sure that we do not cut through those stitches because again that would be bad. So we're cutting through both the pocket piece and the side seam of the garment up to the stitching line and then we're going to be taking this to our overlocker and we're going to be overlocking and or finishing the seam just between those notches that's the only bit we're going to be doing. So we're just at the overlock now and I can show you how I overlock between those notches. I pull back the remainder of the side seam to make sure that that's out of the way and then we can just basically whiz this through the overlocker but you know if you don't have an overlocker you can either pink this edge or you can use an overcast stitch on your sewing machine so you don't need an overlocker but you need to make sure you keep the rest of that seam out of the way. So here we've got our overlocked or finished edge of the pocket between the notches and then what we're going to do next is we're turning it over and we are just going to under stitch between the notches where we've just finished that seam. So we've gone back across to the sewing machine and we're working from the right side of the garment so what you need to do is you need to make sure that the seam allowance underneath that you've just finished is pointing towards your pocket piece and then starting from the right side of the garment so that's the finished side the top side of your fabric we are going to stitch between the notches again we're only working between the notches still we're not doing anything else at the moment but we're going to stitch the pocket to the seam allowance underneath and this is what under stitching is this will help the pocket sit really nicely once the garment is fully constructed so now you can see where we have done the under stitching we're looking at the right side of the fabric here and underneath the seam allowance is now stitched down towards the pocket so what we're going to do now is folding the pocket towards the main fabric piece wrong sides together we're just going to pull out those notches so that they sit like I'm showing you here and then what you want to go do at this point is take it to your iron and give everything a really good press so just press that pocket piece down and press those notches out so any little wrinkles there are all nice and pressed flat and you can see now how that pocket piece is sort of indented within the seam or what will be the seam when we have fully finished it. So what I'm doing now is we're taking it back to the sewing machine. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I think it just gives you a nicer finish. And I'm just top stitching around that indentation that we've just created. I just do this at a quarter of an inch. So you wanna work with your needle in the down position so that when you stop, it's in the down position and then you can pivot around the corner. I'm just using a normal stitch length at this point. So you can see here, I've finished that with the needle down, lift the presser foot and finish off so we've got a really nice top stitched edge. And then you should have something that looks like this. So this is from the right side, we've now got that lovely top stitched edge and then from the wrong side that first pocket piece is in position. So now we're going to line up the other pocket piece with the one that we've just stitched into place and we're just going to pin all around the curved edge and then we are going to be able to stitch this in place again if you have an overlock you can do it on your overlocker if you don't have an overlocker you can use pinking shears or the overcast stitch on your sewing machine but we are just stitching this curved edge so keeping everything else out of the way, we are just working on the pocket. So you need to fold back the rest of your garment at this stage. We are just going to stitch around that curved edge that we've just pinned. Obviously, if you are using an overlocker, make sure you remove your pins. Don't overlock over pins because it will seriously damage your machine. And I was very lucky there. <laughs> it's really difficult doing this when you're trying to film at the same time and making sure that you still looking after your machine and you're not getting your fingers in the way and pins in the way etc trust me it's not easy but we are just finishing that curved seam of the pocket only at this point so that's what that looks like when that edge is finished obviously i've got my gorgeous rainbow overlocking there and you can see all that curved edge of the pocket is now finished and then what we're going to do now is we just need to secure the top edge of the pocket to the garment and the bits that aren't sewn together of the pocket to the side seam so we're just going to put some basting stitches at these points that i'm pointing out here 
So we're back at the sewing machine and I'm just working from the top at the moment. I am basting the top of the pocket to where the waistband would be attached just to make sure that that pocket is fully attached to the top and then I'm just pivoting and I'm now stitching the pocket down up to the notch. You don't want to go any further than that notch and then at the bottom notch we're going to just baste that little bit of pocket down to the side seam as well so it makes sure that the pocket is fully secured. So now we've done that we should have something that looks like this. We've got the pocket fully inserted, we have it basted to the top and the side seam of the garment and we have the pocket fully in place. So now what we want to do is we want to get the other front pattern piece so this is either the other piece that it might be the leg of your trouser or it could be the back of your skirt etc and we are going to line up the side seams right sides together and then we are going to be stitching that side seam in place so we're just going to pin this in place as is for now we're just pinning those side seams together so the front pattern piece or the front fabric piece with the pocket fully inserted now is faced up and then I've got the back pattern piece face down so they are right sides facing and I am pinning just the side seam together and then we're going to stitch at our normal seam allowance so in my case it's half an inch. I've just pointed out there is you need to make sure that the pocket underneath that pocket opening does not get caught in your line of stitching at this point so we're just following that side seam here and we are stitching at half an inch and yeah you, you can usually do this through with feel through your fabric but you just want to make sure I'm just going in between here just to make sure that that pocket opening is not getting caught in my stitching line and that you keep that out of the way but we're just going to fully construct that side seam now that pocket is inserted using our half inch seam allowance at a normal stitch length of 2.5 to 3 which is the ones that I generally use dependent on the weight of fabric that I'm sewing with. And yeah, we've just gone all the way up that side seam. So we now have our side seam sewn together and we have that lovely pocket, that lovely inseam pocket, fully secured and finished inside. You can see my line of stitching here at this point. I've made sure I've not got that pocket opening caught in that stitching and we're just going to finish this side seam edge on the overlocker. Again if you don't have an overlocker use your pinking shears or your overcast stitch or your usual finishing method to completely finish that side seam at this point and then we're about there we've got this pocket done. And there we have it we are fully constructed inseam pocket that is fully secure. We just need to give this a press now. So I'm just folding the side seam, wrong sides together. We're going to give it a press and then here we go. It's all done and we've got a beautifully finished, really stable and secure inseam pocket that is not going to bag out, that is going to line up perfectly with your side seam and inside this is what it should look like. You've got a perfectly finished pocket that's not going to fray or unravel and I just think it's an amazing technique. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.